Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has affected running injuries and also what we can learn from it. Um, there's been some interesting research just published that we'll talk about in this video. I've also put a link to all of our free webinars uh, that you can check out. So if you'd like to learn more about running injury assessment and management, do check those out. We've got a great new one on iliotibial band syndrome, uh, but also resources there on lateral hip pain, lower back pain, and Achilles tendinopathy. So do check those out. Now, I think one thing we probably can all agree on with uh, COVID-19 is it's led to a huge amount of change for so many of us. Changes in our lifestyle how and how we work, changes in our when, uh, mental well-being as well, increases in stress level for lots of us trying to juggle work and homeschooling um, and everything that we're trying to manage. And it's also led to a lot of changes in training behavior too. And what we know is that actually all of these things, our lifestyle, our training behavior, our mental well-being, they all interlink together and they can all then lead to an increase or change in injury risk. So I think one of the key things we see is that it's change as a result of anything in life can really influence our injury risk and particularly have a knock-on effect to how we train and how we cope with that training. Now, as I said, there's some interesting research that's looked to this. Holmes et al. just published this paper where they've done a huge survey of over a thousand runners and they looked to see how people were training prior to the, uh, the onset of the COVID-19 uh, restrictions and how their training changed afterwards and then looked to see if this seemed to link with those runners that went to go on to develop an injury. Now in this study, about 10% of this big sample of a thousand runners went on to develop an injury. And what they found then was quite interesting when they compared the results of the big survey, survey they did between injured and uninjured runners. They found that uh, runners who sustained a new injury during COVID-19, as they've commented, made a significantly greater number of total running behavior changes, encompassing training, environment, and social factors compared to uninjured runners. So what they found in these studies is we have more change in those runners that go on to develop injury, but not just more change in terms of training, uh, but more change in other aspects of life as well, which we might expect. And particularly in terms of training, what I find interesting when you drill down into the data, it isn't the case necessarily that the runners were running more. Actually, the injured runners seem to be doing higher intensity work, so more maximal intensity sessions within their week. They also seem to be doing more training in different environments, in particular, more uh, number of training days doing trail runs. So it might be that there's specific aspects of change within the training that are gonna be relevant to, to, more, uh, to some individuals and not so relevant to others. Now, as we said, a lot of these things link in together. It's easy for us just to look at, say, training change and say, this is what's gonna be causing injury. But of course, our training is a behavior that's gonna be influenced by how we feel emotionally, but everything else that's going on in our life as well. And they found then that work had an influence. So in this study, 56% of injured runners reported that they had less time to run due to changes in work environments. Now, um, I can certainly um, agree with that. A part of the change in work, working from home, but also having to juggle homeschooling has a knock-on effect for your running. And what they've, they theorize in this study is that this might link then to the increase in maximal intensity sessions that the injured runners have reported. So perhaps they've got less time to run, so when they go out, they, they need to get that session done quickly, but also they will feel they need to push themselves really hard within that session to get the maximum benefit out of it. So we can see some of these other factors, work factors interlinking with how people train as well. And also from this study, interestingly enough, the psychosocial factors influence training change too. So Holmes et al uh, commented that our results indicate that negative effect and loneliness scores were associated with a greater number of total changes in training behavior. 
So this really showing the key of recognizing that how we feel in ourselves mentally is gonna have a knock on effect in terms of how we train. And that may go either way. We may lack motivation and therefore go for a period of training, not so much. Or if we're reliant upon training to manage our mood and mental well-being, when we're really stressed, we may feel that we need to chain, uh, train an awful lot more. So really interesting study here. And I think one of the key things that we can take from this is to, to look at the multi multifactorial nature of running injury, not just to look at a single aspect like strength or gait, or even just looking at training change, but looking at what might actually lead to that training change if we want to make sustained improvements in that person's training behavior. Okay, so some key takeaways from, from, uh, from this research and what we can learn from, from COVID-19 and its effect on running injury. Uh, number one would be that change is normal. We're all in a state of flux. And actually in this study, a lot of the uh, non-injured runners had a lot of change going on in their training behavior as well. But it might be that more change in multiple regions of our life is likely to lead to an increase in injury risk. So those uh, runners that did develop an injury on average had 8.2 changes going on versus the non-injured runners that had 7.4. So on average, maybe one extra change going on. But you can see most of us have change. So it's not just looking at one aspect of that. It's considering how it might all interlink. In particular, actually, it was the changes in training intensity and training type, like running on different surfaces that were more uh, that were different in those injured runners versus the uninjured runners. So a take home for this is don't just look at training volume and how it changes. That wasn't significantly different between injured and uninjured runners here. Be, be sure to look at training intensity and type as well. Um, and actually in this study, they had a really simple way of getting runners to measure their intensity. They just asked them to tell them uh, if the session was light, moderate, hard, or maximal. So get the runners to rate their session, or even better if you can, get them to score it with an RPE score. So 10 is maximal level and zero is no effort at all. Now these things can be really simple, but really useful in your everyday practice. Um, just recently I've seen a runner who is getting calf pain and feeling really fatigued after his um, Sunday long run. He was taking him three or four days to recover and having a knock on effect for the rest of his sessions. So I asked him, well, you know, what's your effort score like for that long run? Bearing in mind it should be long and easy. And he was scoring it as a seven to eight out of 10 for that long run, where we might expect it to be between a two and a four. So really simple thing then to say, okay, it's your long run, the goal is endurance, keep the effort level pretty low, two to four. Then we can see what the knock-on effect is in terms of your calf symptoms, in terms of your fatigue levels, etc. Um. Finally, with this, we need to be aware how um, lifestyle factors like work can influence how we train and also how psychosocial factors in terms of mood and mental well-being can, can affect how we train and respond to training too. We know there's evidence that stress on its own can be a factor in the development of injury, can slow healing potentially, can even influence how we respond to rehab. So as part of your questioning, yes, look at training changes, look at lifestyle changes, but also see how someone's coping mentally because that can be a big part of the picture as well. Okay, thanks everyone uh, very much for listening today. Um, I'd like to hear your comments. What have you found in clinic? Are you seeing a lot of runners that are injured because they've suddenly increased their training as a result of the pandemic? Are you seeing particular types of injuries coming out there? What sort of solutions have you found effective for it? I look forward to, re uh, to reading your uh, comments and replies later. Okay, thanks again for listening. Bye for now.